There's a lot of weapons throughout the entire Assassin's Creed series. Some can be amazing, whilst others can straight up be silly. In this video, I'm going to talk about my favourite weapon from each Assassin's Creed game. But before I begin though, I want to clarify that I won't be covering gadgets and tools like rope darts, phantom blades, hidden guns and such. I'll save those for another video. Instead, I'll be focusing on various swords and secret weapons, ranging from their incredible power to just simply how outrageous they look. So yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So let's start off with Assassin's Creed 1, the first Assassin's Creed game. When it comes to the range of weapons in this game, I'll be honest, there's not much. After all, this is the game that set a blueprint for the future of the franchise. So it's not exactly crazy to see that there's not many types of weapons. But the one I'm going to go for is, well, the iconic hidden blade. I mean, how could I not? When you think of iconic video game stuff, there's the Pokeball, Elder Scroll and of course the hidden blade fits right in there. It's what made Assassin's Creed, well Assassin's Creed, and as the name suggests, the hidden blade is a compact retractable blade that rests on the wrist, making it easy to conceal until it strikes with deadly precision. This weapon is practically in every Assassin's Creed game, well except for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it's only shown in the DLC of that game. Anyway, among the countless methods that the assassins use to eliminate their targets, the hidden blade stands out as the most dependable when all other options falter. It serves as not only a symbol of the Brotherhood, but also represents the essence of the entire series. Of course, it's only right that I put it as my favourite for the very first Assassin's Creed game. Now for Assassin's Creed 2, and the very first game of the Ezio trilogy. Assassin's Creed 2 definitely had a massive step up from Assassin's Creed 1 in terms of, well, everything, especially the weapons. This game is where Ubisoft introduced a shit ton of variations for different swords. But the one I've specifically picked out as my favourite in Assassin's Creed 2 has to be the Sword of Altair. And if you can't tell by the name, it's of course Altair's signature sword. Now I know, there's a discussion to be had of whether it's actually Altair's signature weapon, because that could also be the Syrian Sabre. But to me, the Syrian Sabre was more of a ceremonial blade that was given to him once he regained the rank of Master Assassin. So I guess it's more of a symbolic thing rather than his signature sword. Anyway, the sword of Altair held considerable power and accompanied Altair as an assassin throughout his entire life. So being able to see Ezio wield it is pretty cool. Now the sword itself in Assassin's Creed 2 is pretty overpowered. It had a 555 in terms of damage, speed and deflect. So if you wanted to use this sword to get through the game quicker, it was definitely the way to go. The Sword of Altair is also in the other two SEO games with Brotherhood and Revelations, but I did not include it for those two games, because if I did, that would just be a waste of a spot for both those games. Now let's move on to Ezio's second game, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And just like in Assassin's Creed 2, Ubisoft took weapon selection to the next level. While many familiar weapons from the previous games are present, there's one particular weapon that I found the most enjoyable, and that is the Dagger Brutus. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, it's ranked second only to the powerful Sword of Altair. But after using the Sword of Altair in Assassin's Creed 2, I didn't really find it to give me the same level of satisfaction, so that's why I went with the Brutus Dagger. This weapon is also just as good as the Sword of Altair though, so it's not necessarily bad by all means. It has 5 points in damage, speed and deflect, so it is an absolute menace. And just like I mentioned, choosing between the Dagger Brutus and the Sword of Altair boils down to personal preference, because the dagger is truly brilliant on its own. Here's some interesting lore about this weapon which I find quite fascinating. So Amunet, who we know as Aya, was originally in possession of this weapon, that was until she gave it to Junius Brutus, who was a hidden one, and then he used it to deliver the final blow to Julius Caesar in the Curia of the Theatre of Pompeii. Oh, and if you're wondering how Ezio managed to obtain this dagger, well, after Brutus decided to end his own life, his dagger and armour were sealed away hidden in a tomb where Ezio found it in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. So yeah, the dagger itself in game is a perfect match if you're that type of player who prefers a stealthy approach with close range combat. To actually obtain this Brutus dagger in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you'd need to collect 6 scrolls of Romulus, which I did not really mind at all because I enjoyed doing the Romulus stuff. The dagger itself is not something you can just buy in the game, but the effort of collecting each scroll to me was worth it. It's these low style weapons that I find the most interesting, which is why I've included it here in this video. Now for Assassin's Creed Revelations. And I've actually not decided to include the best weapon in the game, which is of course Yusuf's Turkish Kijil, which is practically a 5-5-5 in terms of stats. 
But the one I've decided on is something that in my opinion looks the best in the entire game, and that is Vlad Tepes. Now don't get me wrong, when I say that use of sword is the best in the game in terms of damage, that does not necessarily mean that Vlad Tepes' sword is weak by any means. In fact, it was also pretty strong with 444 in terms of stats. So to actually get this sword in Revelations, you'd have to explore Vlad the Impaler's tomb, which is a historical figure, which once again, gives me more of a reason to like this sword. If you cannot tell by now, I'm a huge fan of real life weaponry being implemented into the games. What I mainly like about this sword is not the damage that it can provide, but its very unique design and animation. The sword has the resemblance to Vlad the Impaler's real life sword that he used, named the Kilij. And as for the animations, I'll be honest, the animations that the sword gave were very unlike something Ezio would do, but it's pretty cool to look at so I'm not complaining. It gives very brutal animations which is not exactly a surprise knowing that the sword once belonged to Vlad the Impaler. In fact his methods consisted of torture, mutilation and mass murder. So when I say it's very unlike Ezio, that's what I'm referring to. The animations are very brutal that Ezio can often drive the entire sword into an enemy's face and even slit throats very viciously. So seeing this does take some time to get used to. While it may not be the most stealthy weapon, there's no denying the thrill of having such a historically significant relic in our hands. Assassin's Creed 3 In my opinion, choosing a favourite weapon for this game was quite easy, as Kana himself is known to be some sort of a brute character. In many Assassin's Creed games, the weapons are often either always swords or firearms, but not in this game. There's one particular weapon which I enjoyed the most, and that is Kana's tomahawk. You see, Kana's combat itself is different. He's more fluid and quicker when compared to previous games. The use of the tomahawk alongside the iconic hidden blade made this combination for Kana simply remarkable. Many people may not enjoy the combat in Assassin's Creed 3, but once you're able to get some combos together, to me it performs pretty well. The tomahawk itself helped a lot to make the combat feel quite fluid, and that's not even including his upgraded tomahawk, because the base tomahawk itself is already good, but as the game progresses more and more, the damage of the tomahawk increased and elevated the combat even more, and that is all thanks to the tomahawk itself. The weapon uses the Native American lore to its advantage, which blends Connor's heritage with the assassins. One thing I did notice and I love the most about the tomahawk is how the assassin insignia is embedded into it, and even the animations for the tomahawk are great too. They include a more brutal finish in his kills, adding more to Connor's combat as a whole. So yeah, overall the tomahawk to me is my favourite weapon in Assassin's Creed 3. It just fits perfectly into the setting of the game and suits Connor perfectly. Now for Assassin's Creed Black Flag. This one is kind of a ridiculous one, but is one that I loved a lot. So, the time period of Black Flag consisted mainly of swords and pistols, and my favourite weapon is weirdly a combination of both of them, and that is called the Pistol Swords. Statistically, these swords are the second best in the game, with the officer's rapiers being the first, but I cannot put those as my favourite because I'd be lying if I did. The design and unique animation of the pistol swords is why I loved it so much. And just like the Brutus dagger and Vlad Tepes sword that I mentioned earlier, the pistol swords animations primarily involve Edward paralysing an opponent and delivering shots from the pistols. Or he can impale an enemy before delivering the final shot. The explosion effect of the animation is only for show and you cannot exactly use it as a pistol itself. It's pretty weird to just explain but seeing it all in action is what makes it so unique. Many people may not like the pistol swords because of its animation. I say this because at times, Edward would finish his attack by firing the pistol sword which would hold the animation in place and during this animation you don't exactly have any control over Edward or even what's happening which makes you vulnerable to other enemies attacking you from behind. But I honestly do not care about all that. It's one of the more unique weapons in the series which is why I like it so much. Oh and if you wanted to unlock this unique sword, it can be unlocked by completing all of the assassin contracts. So yeah, it's kind of a long process to unlock it, but in my opinion, I think it's worth it. Now for Assassin's Creed Rogue, and this game to me is quite hard to determine a favourite weapon, because this is actually the only game in the series where I don't have an outright favourite to me that stands out the most. 
I say this because it contained almost every identical asset from Black Flag and this meant the weapon variety for Shay was not that exciting. However, I did do some digging and when I booted up the game again to see what I liked the most, I found one and that is the katanas or as they're called in the game as katana and wakizashi. Now I could have chosen the boring answer and gone with once again the sword of Altair which appears quite a lot in the series or even perhaps the bastard sword for it being I believe the hardest hitting one but no. The katanas are what I went with. These are a two-handed longsword which can be obtained through Uplay so that means no exciting quest or scavenger hunt for them, it's classic Ubisoft microtransactions to get it. The weapon itself though in game is pretty fun to use. Shay himself usually has a boring dagger for parrying in his offhand, but the use of katanas makes the wakizashi part of the set the dagger which makes Shay look pretty badass when wielding them. There's quite a few variations of this katana in other Assassin's Creed games like Unity and also Origins, but the one in Rogue to me stands out more than those ones. Speaking of Assassin's Creed Unity, this is where the shift in game engine occurred for Ubisoft which resulted in a complete change of design and animation for the weapons. There's a lot of weapons throughout Assassin's Creed Unity that you can choose as your personal favourite. I'll give honourable mentions to the Sword of Eden which of course I'm sure we all know what that is and also the Eagle which correct me if I'm wrong is the best guillotine gun in the entire game. Those may be your favourite weapons in the game but for me I ultimately decided on something that's actually quite similar to the Sword of Eden and that is the Eagle of Suja. This sword is a very unique one because it would act as not only a sword but also a flashbang that would blind enemies in combat. This would of course make the combat pretty easy to be honest. It allows you to create some massive breathing room and some fights are getting quite intense. Damage wise the sword is insanely overpowered. Its damage and parry slider is maxed out making it on par with the Sword of Eden. So ultimately it's personal preference to determine which out of the two you like the most. What I do like about the sword is that it has some very Assassin's Creed like lore to it such as it being created through the first civilization via the Apple of Eden. So if we're talking about real life history and lore to it there's practically none. It's one of those Ubisoft swords that are just completely ridiculous to look at which is what I like a lot about it. To actually unlock the Eagle of Suja sword itself is fairly easy. You'd need to complete all the Suja legacy side missions. These are basically the Nostradamus enigmas but are worded differently. They unlock and are shown on the map after you do a couple of them as part of the main storyline in the fourth mission of the Dead Kings DLC. Leave a comment below on what your favourite unity weapon is. I'm actually quite interested to know because there's quite a handful that people may like. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Syndicate and just like Assassin's Creed Unity there were a lot of weapons that were available for us to use. The weapons in Assassin's Creed Syndicate came in the form of four categories. The Kukri, Cane, Brass Knuckles and the Firearms. Now out of these four weapon selections, my favourite weapon actually came in the form of firearms which may be a surprise to a lot of people as others would often choose a Kukri or a cane. I'll be honest, I chose two weapons in this game as my favourite so I kind of cheated but hey this is my video so I can do what I want. The first firearm that I chose as my favourite is the Mars pistol. This pistol kind of gave me very classic James Bond vibes with its design. You see in Victorian era London, the Mars pistol stands as the most hard hitting handgun, surpassing all of its counterparts in terms of firepower, rate of fire and accuracy and the real life version of this pistol was called the Mars automatic pistol which at that time was quite deadly. I mean just take a look at its in game stats when it's fully upgraded, it's some pretty overpowered stuff. To actually unlock this pistol however, it's kind of a grind. You'd have to reach loyalty level 5 with Ned Wynert just to unlock the crafting plan for the pistol. To actually craft the pistol, it costed £10,000, 150 metal and 100 chemical. So yeah, it's not exactly easy obtainable. My other favourite firearm in this game is the self-loading pistol which if you cannot tell by the name, it practically self-loads itself with bullets which is pretty handy. When it's fully upgraded it's kind of on the same level as the Mars pistol but the reason I'd place this as a close second is the design of it. I just prefer the design of the Mars pistol a lot more. The damage however of the self loading pistol is just as OP as the Mars pistol. It's one shot in the head and can even often one shot in the body at times. Upgrading it however makes it even better as you can have 30 bullets in the gun which is more than enough on top of itself reloading. To actually unlock the self loading pistol, you need to be level 9 and also achieve a loyalty level of 5 with Frederick Abilene, which I believe is the bounty hunt stuff on the map. So yeah, I had to include those two weapons as my favourite for Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Yeah. 
Okay, now this is where the weapons start to get a bit insane and cross the line of being practical. Of course, the next three games in the series are RPG games, so the weapons will be a lot different. It's funny because I went from the Hidden Blade being my favourite in Assassin's Creed 1 all the way to this bow being my favourite in Assassin's Creed Origins. I don't even know what it's called in game, so I'll just refer to it as the Glowing Bow. This bow is completely insane. It's not even a weapon that can be used throughout the entire game. In fact, you're only allowed to use it during one specific mission where Bayek is hallucinating and fighting the representation of Apep, which in Egyptian mythology is the deity of chaos, which appears in the form of some sort of giant snake. The actual deep lore behind this fight scene is pretty crazy. You see Ra, who is the sun god, battles Apep at the end of each day, which is why Bayek during this hallucination becomes infused with Ra's powers, which consisted of this crazy looking bow. Yeah, just explaining it sounded pretty outrageous. I mean, just look how badass this scene is where the arrows start to manifest around Bayek and then slowly, one by one, flow into his arrow pouch. To me, that's just pretty cool to see. Anyway, the bow itself when we use it does feel like it would be overpowered. I'd imagine if Ubisoft ever let us use this throughout the entire game, it would be far too broken because of how much damage can be done with it, as well as it consisting of an unlimited amount of glowing arrows. Now for Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the next game up in the RPG games. So of course this weapon I deem as my favourite is just going to be as ludicrous as the one I chose for Origins. And that is Minotaur's Labris, which if you can't tell by the name is the heavy axe that's used by the Minotaur himself. Now in my opinion this heavy bladed axe is the best looking weapon in this entire game. Of course that's a whole discussion of what others may think is, but for me this weapon is the best looking. The Minotaur's Labris is an exquisite weapon, even when it doesn't have any elemental engraving attached to it. The weapon itself glows a red tint, which looks insane. It's adorned with two minotaur heads on each side and has a really cool minotaur head handle. The reason I've classed it as my favourite is not only because of it looking the best, but also because it comes with one of the most impressive perks in the entire game, which reduces the adrenaline cost of overpower abilities from 3 bars to 2. And despite it being pretty slow to swing, it can deliver some of the most devastating and heavy hitting attacks, which can take down multiple enemies with just a single fully upgraded overpower attack. The Minotaur's Labris also provides a boost in critical damage by 25%, making crits hit even harder, as well as increasing overall warrior damage which amplifies both basic and warrior abilities. To actually unlock this unique axe is pretty wild. You'd need to defeat the actual Minotaur himself. And no, I'm not referring to that fake one that you find in some random side quest. I'm talking about the actual Minotaur. Now of course you won't receive the Minotaur's literal axe that he uses because, well, look at the size of it. So the game did have to size it down to fit a regular sized human. So yeah, that's my favourite weapon in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Honestly, honourable mention to the Polyphemus Cyclops Bludgeon. That is also an insane weapon similar to the Minotaur's Labris, but at the end of the day it's all down to personal preference. Lastly, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and just like the previous two games, the weapon in this game does not exactly stop being outrageous. In fact, I believe the one I've selected for this game is probably the most outrageous one in the entire video, and that my friends, is Mjolnir, aka Thor's goddamn hammer. Given that Valhalla revolves around the Viking invasion of Britain, it comes as no surprise that the gods play a role in both the main story and the side missions. So naturally, the inclusion of Mjolnir is expected, which somewhat fits quite well into the Norse mythology side of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Of course there's also the Excalibur sword in Valhalla which is a legendary weapon that's also ridiculously strong, but it still falls short compared to the sheer power of Mjolnir. The only downside about this weapon is that you can only get it once you finish the main story, which kind of sucks. But it also does not suck because imagine we were able to use this during the story. That would have not only looked ridiculous but also made combat quite easy. Anyway, the hammer itself in game deals such a massive amount of damage to enemies with each strike and also has the ability to not only stun the intended target that we're fighting but also all the nearby enemies. And with over a 30% chance of achieving this effect on a regular hit, the sheer power of this weapon can cause the very ground beneath enemies to tremble. That's quite literally by the way. So as you'd expect, the effects become even more impressive when you compare it with Thor's armor set. So yeah, it's pretty overpowered. But what can you really expect when you're wielding a god's literal weapon? So there you have it. This was quite a long video to make as there's an incredible amount of weapons in each Assassin's Creed game to choose from. But in the end, this is what I went with. 
I'm actually interested to see what your guys' favourite weapons are in any particular Assassin's Creed game. I could also make a video where I talk about my favourite armour sets from each Assassin's Creed game too. Of course that won't include any of the Master Assassin outfits because I've already ranked those. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like. It'll help me out a lot. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.